Some years ago, my husband John found out that Margaret Mahi, one of his favorite writers, had said that a book called The Flint Heart was the book that she most wanted children in the 21st century to be able to read. And since he was a great admirer of Margaret's and he'd never heard of The Flint Heart, uh, he went on a quest to find this book. Now you have to understand that my husband John thinks he's going to outlive computers, that they're just a passing fad. So he went to his local bookstore and said, can you find this book for me? And they did find it. And we got this old sort of buff colored book with an art deco uh, engraving on the front. And he began to read this story and he just loved it. But you have to realize that John should have been a Victorian or at least an Edwardian. And he, uh, he gave it to me to read and I said, yes, it's wonderful, but I, it's very old fashioned. But John wasn't uh, going to be discouraged by that. He began sending it out to various publishers saying, don't you want to republish this book? It's such a wonderful story. And they all said no. Uh, he sent it to four or five publishers. And then he and our son, John, had uh, done a book for Candlewick. So he sent it to Karen Lotz at Candlewick because he knew Karen had a lot of good taste. Uh, so Karen loved it too, but she said, we can't publish it the way it is. What can we do to preserve this story? Uh, so he thought, and I think the thinking took more than the actual doing, trying to figure out how to preserve this wonderful story for another hundred years of reading. Uh, but, and make it accessible to modern readers. And so we had to take out a lot. We called it a free abridgment. Uh, we removed a lot of things like the political jokes of early 20th century <laughs> in England, which we figured American readers would probably not understand. Um, and then there were page after page of the varieties of fairies that lived on Dartmoor at that time, just lists. Um, there was a descriptions of flora and fauna that went on interminably. Uh, and then Eden Philpotts actually liked to hear himself talk, obviously. So there was a lot of Eden Philpotts enjoying himself. Uh, and we enjoyed him too, but we thought maybe enough was enough. So we just, uh, John would read a chapter and he would decide what was essential to the story in the chapter and what was not essential. And then I would go upstairs to my little study and rewrite accordingly. And a few things we had to add because Eden forgot to put in motivation <laughs> in a couple of places, or he seemed to contradict himself every now and then. Uh, but uh, mostly it's Eden Philpott's language. It's certainly all of his characters and the story is his. So we have to give him a lot of credit. And in fact, when I got the book and his name wasn't on the cover, I immediately emailed the publisher and I said, where is Eden's name? Well, it's on the title page, but not on the cover. I guess the publisher thinks our names are better known than Eden Philpott's name. People might wonder what appeals to modern readers because it is a really a, a early 20th century story. It's published in 1910 originally. Um, it's just a wonderful story. And it's, no, it's not Catherine Patterson, it's Eden Philpotts. Um, it's his wonderful whimsy, it's his, it's his wonderful language. Uh, it, we tried to preserve as much of his language as possible, and when we had to do something else, we tried to imitate his language. So the parts that really are made up are, are as close as we can imitate Eden Philpotts as possible because we wanted it to be uh, a single voice um, of the narrator coming through. Although uh, the publisher suggested that since there were two of us doing it, we should say we instead of I, where, he, where Philpott says I. So that was one change we made in the narration. But, uh, but we really did try to preserve as much of what he did as possible. We hope that, that even the steeliest Flint Heart will respond to this story. It's because it's a very warm story and it's, it's a wise story. The character of the Zagabog, who uh, is the all-knowing Zagabog, and yet so humble and so beautiful. Um, he's a wonderful, wonderful character. And um, I think he, he and Unity probably are the two characters that will touch your heart. Unity is the five-year-old who begins every sentence with, I wonder. 
And she's just uh, a child full of wonder and curiosity. And she and the Zagabog um, become very dear friends. And uh, in the end, when the, the evil Flint Heart has to be carried to be destroyed, the Zagabog says to entrust the, Zag the Flint Heart to Unity because she's, he knows she's the only one whose heart will not turn uh, hard carrying the Flint Heart.